Hacking Group hides exploit in Windows Update Service. Hey Chris, um, you have an interesting story like Andy, like uh, the North Korean actors using Windows update mechanism to basically propagate the new malware. Could you elaborate and enlighten a little bit what's the new tactics, why it's, um, uh, why it's most relevant in the sense of using the Windows update as propagation mechanism? Yes, so I feel like this story is fitting to fit in this segment. As in your story, Ganesh was talking about Eternal Blue. We know Eternal Blue was used in the WannaCry attack. And this group here, Lazarus, um, mm -hmm. was accused of using Eternal Blue in the WannaCry attacks. And they're at okay. it again. Yeah. So this is a North Korean state actor. And they're hiding their malicious payloads in a Windows update. So what happens is they're doing a spear phishing campaign impersonating the American global security aerospace firm, Lockheed Martin. And what they're doing is loading a, a Microsoft Word file in the email and a user clicks it and it will download this dynamic library file called dropsinc.dll. And that file is actually being hidden in the Windows Update client. So when the Windows Update client runs, it executes and it then runs the malicious file that will connect to what they have is a control, uh, command and control server, and that's hosted in GitHub repository, hosting all these malicious modules masquerading as a PNG image files. And I'm not sure if the GitHub repository is still up, but it may have been closed down and they may have switched over to other ones. It's the difficult with um, command and control, one goes down, one comes back up. But the original one was created on January 17th. So we know this attack is pretty recent. And yeah, that's, um, you know, a short story, but um, it's pretty informative, I think, this article. But, yeah. Yeah, so, do you have any thoughts uh, on it? I, I think, uh, yeah, basically, I'm just reading through it. Uh, the repository has been created on January 17th, and malware by it's basically discovered on January 18th. So it's very hard after GitHub repository. So one thing is, I think uh, you both uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, in the in in the past, this uh, APT38 or hidden Cobra, they never used Windows Update Server as a propagation mechanism, right? That is the new tactic they try and incorporate in the new campaign. Am I right with that uh, assumption? Um. I'm not entirely sure. We know that the WannaCry was uh -huh. heavily Windows-based. It may be a new tactic for them. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I can. It's almost. I would almost consider this a supply chain attack too, since they're hiding in in the Windows product. Actually, yeah, th that's where actually I'm alluding to. Basically, that's why you know. Uh, updating services for any of the known vendors, basically the trust factor is higher, right? So more chances of uh, people are not paying much more closer attention if something is amiss. So that, that's actually the good, good point, uh, Chris, basically. I think uh, now more and more we are gonna seeing more stuff like the supply chain kind of attacks going to the source, you know, trying to get the update servers and stuff like that. So that being said, what would be what would be the different ways we can protect ourselves, like in an organization? Yeah, I think the first part is kind of how all their stories have kind of gone towards is having a strong endpoint protection, ones that are mm -hmm. able to detect zero day or pretty recent attacks like this to be able to stop it. And I know it's it's getting harder for these endpoint detection systems because attackers are hiding them in these Windows updates and um, and these libraries and execution binaries that are commonly used by software that is known to make the computer function and other services that are usually regarded as normal operation. That is, um, I would say that's the first part and being able to alert on that would be 
would be the next stage to be able to run automatic playbooks and to send it to your instant response team if you have one. And I would also say finally you gotta shell out and purchase a, a good email filtering system. So since this is initiated by a spear phishing attack, you, your um, email filtering kind of contain this. And we have it here at at t we have email filter, filtering too. So to contain it and put in a separate little section so you can't open it or there's a warning before emails opened. And the, I would say definitely updating your Microsoft Word subscriptions because the most recent ones don't allow you to open or warn you before the file has macros from untrusted sources. So if you ever see that message as a user and you don't trust the file or you don't know where it's from, do not open the Word or Excel document. I see. Good point. Very good point. Yeah, I would, uh, I would even go so far as to say, you know, macros were invented a long time ago to do things that we just don't really need to do very much anymore. So I, I don't know. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a document that had macros for a legitimate purpose because it's just sort of such a, such an outdated technology. So to your point, Chris, yeah, if, you've, if you're opening a document and it wants you to enable macros in Word or anywhere else, no, <laughs> absolutely not. And I think even further than that, it's it's important to make sure that people in general understand the importance of email security themselves. You know, maybe maybe it's not a good idea to expect like the entire population of internet users to, to do this, but at least people in your enterprise should be aware of the fact that there's this is what a phishing email looks like, you know, and these are the different social engineering tactics that are used. You know, they're, they're gonna try and reward you, they're gonna try and scare you, they're gonna allude to your um to your humanity in terms of like help me or i'm gonna get fired or like you won this thing or this is urgent and you need to look at it those are very common ways that that you know social engineering will get people to click on emails and and with spear phishing in particular it's even harder because the whole point of spear phishing is to make it look as relevant as possible so it's going to use terminology that is uh, native to your enterprise and, and your job in some cases. It's going to use the same words um, mm -hmm. that are that are specific to your role sometimes. And, you know, um, I've seen some spear phishing emails that that that, have, that were like, wow, that that looks really good. But, you know, it's not going to it's not going to fool everyone, but it, it can fool some people. So understanding that who sent you the email is always very important. And, you know, of course, Email filtering is great. Having a system in place that will sandbox, you know, something that looks suspicious, like this file came from an external source and contains an attachment that's a Word document. I'm going to sandbox that. And all that means is I'm just going to run it in like a special VM that's not connected to anything. Just see what it does. Oh, look at that. It's dropping a DLL and it's reaching out to GitHub um, for a C2 channel. That's obviously not good, and so it never even reaches the end user. That's great, but email filtering doesn't work 100% of the time. So it goes back to the point we made with the last story, which is defense in depth having multiple layers. So you want that email filtering, and then you want people to understand what it looks like, right? Because ultimately, if no one clicks on it, no one clicks on it. It just sits there. You know, you've got to have that click. So. It just goes back to that layered approach, I think. I mean, it's a it's a short story, as you mentioned, Chris, but it's a it's a pretty important one in general. Yeah, you put up a you bring up a good point, Andy. We haven't talked about security awareness yet in the segment, and yeah, that should be the last line of defense. Um, the user can't if the user doesn't click the email, the uh, malware or ransomware doesn't get into your system through yeah. that pathway. Yeah, I think. Um, um... I, I may say a different view. I mean, security awareness should not be the last one. I think it, it should be given as much importance as I was basically uh, giving the train. I, I know we, we do lots of the security awareness within at and also. But also, I think uh, we should encourage people, if they are in doubt, to, you know, report it rather than, even if it is not uh, a threat, that's okay. Rather than users come and, you know, it seems something suspicious. Can you guys take a look? Who are the filter, email filtering thing? Rather than, okay, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like, uh, I'm not sure. 
and maybe user going and clicking through and getting that uh, thread downloaded. I think uh, that security awareness with the user engagement should be the priority also, especially if we talk about all the stories today, uh, the weakest link in some cases would be user, right? It just takes one user to click on the link. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, security awareness should be definitely a forefront too. I guess when I was referring to last line of defense, I meant more of like, oh, it got through the email filtering and it's at like your, uh, it's at your email and the user sees it. So in that case, like the user should know with security awareness made as a priority, the user should know not to uh, click on this email. And uh, one more point for you, Chris. I think in this case, you mentioned it's a specific aviation industry, right? It's at this point, if it's only targeted to one specific industry, but that's what the APT does, right? They pick the targets, they send the spear phishing tailor to that specific target. Yeah, am I right with right. that one? I'm not sure if they're only targeting like aerospace companies. I know that they're impersonating Lockheed Martin. So maybe mm -hmm. other users in their supply chain that they're targeting also, maybe companies that work with Lockheed Martin.